Amen. Appreciate the song tonight and Amen. the song. Listen to our heart. Turn with us to the book of Exodus, uh, chapter number 17. Exodus chapter number 17 is where we'll take our text tonight. Just going to read the uh, last part of the chapter. Um, thought that's been on our heart. We've heard a great deal about it just today uh, in the testimonies and what's been said, and I'm glad that there's a remedy for each one of us. So Exodus chapter number 17, we'll begin our reading tonight at verse number 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, for he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Father, open our hearts tonight to your word and open the word to our hearts. We pray the Holy Spirit would move in this truth and in every heart, touching, applying, or doing what only the Spirit of God can do. We're trusting you for this. We have no abilities within ourselves, no, no powers to share. We're trusting you, Father, to speak clearly into the hearts, the minds, of each and every believer, every person that's here tonight. Thank you for what you're going to do as we pray for the unction to do it. We ask earnestly, confessing our needs are great, as we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Israel had a lot to learn about how to fight uh, before they could ever go into uh, Jericho, the first city they would face, and as a formidable foe to win that battle, they had a great deal to learn about how to fight for God. Um, The bottom line being is that God must be the one in charge, that though they had things along the lines of skills and training and all of that stuff that they would learn over the next 40 years in this wilderness, God was going to teach them most of all how to trust him. And in this first battle, um, it's not, I don't believe a coincidence that the battle was against Amalek. I want to share first a, a a few things to share, but first I want to want to tell you about Amalek. Uh, Amalek was the grandson or great grandson of Esau. Esau, Jacob's brother. Esau, the one who sold his birthright for a little bit of soup. Esau, the one who was the enemy of Jacob for quite some time. Though know they made up when Jacob come back from Bethel. But it wasn't long after that that the descendants of Esau 
would then terrorize the people of Israel once more. From Esau's lineage, we have the Edomites. And uh, it all represents something. There's a picture here. There always is in the Old Testament. There is a picture for us to have as New Testament believers. Esau represented the flesh. Esau's descendants represented the flesh. And now Amalek, the descendant of Esau himself, represented the flesh. It's no coincidence that the first battle Israel would fight would be against the flesh. How many of us today would be willing to say that my greatest battle is not necessarily the devil, but my own flesh? My own flesh is the battle that I'll fight the most. I want to say tonight that the flesh is our enemy. From the Bible, we'll read to you just a few scriptures. I want to start in Romans chapter number 8 and read this for you. The Bible said, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now, that's the flesh. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. I want you to see tonight that the flesh... Hear me now. It cannot be reformed. You can try all you want to do, but you cannot save the flesh. The first man, Adam, according to God, is earthy. The first man, Adam, has within it the very uh, uh, traits and characteristics of a fallen man, and it cannot be reformed. You cannot make holy your flesh. The Bible said again, let me say to you, this is important. The Bible said the carnal mind is enmity against God. The apostle Paul would come later to say that there is a constant warfare going on within me. The inward man fighting against the outward man. That's the carnal mind. That is the flesh that we dwell in. Brother, regardless of who you are, the flesh that you dwell in will ever be your battle. It'll be your battle today. Today, it'll be your battle when you wake up tomorrow. Uh, The flesh man cannot be reformed. He cannot be made holy. He cannot be made righteous. You, my friend, have to learn how to battle the flesh. And it's no wonder, I believe, that the first battle they would face is Amalek. The very representation of the flesh nature, the very representation of those that were prideful and haughty of spirit, the very thing that would remind you of them that would uh, be alienated from God and, and live in such a way as to follow the passions and desires of one's own flesh. And here they come against Israel. Note now that Israel hadn't picked a fight. May I say to you today, you don't have to pick a fight with your flesh. The very instant you wake up it starts fighting you amen and let it be a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night and brother I assure you your flesh will cry out it'll it'll respond you see in a way that wants you to battle uh, to recognize friend that we need to win this war we need to know that we're in a battle every day you don't get a day off from this one if there was a day that you could exit your fleshly body you might But as long as you dwell in this earthly carcass, you're going to battle, amen, the Amalek of the old. You're going to battle the human side, the very nature of man, uh, the corrupt part of man. May I say to you today that there's only one thing that keeps me from being the drug addict or like the street walker or those that are in sin. And that's Jesus today, amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The only thing that gives me, friend, the victory today is that Christ divides. And I'll tell you, it wasn't any different for Israel. They wasn't going to win that battle on their own. When they set out to battle that day, uh, as we can look at the war that was fixing to take place, uh, they recognized real quick when Moses said to Joshua, He said, get your men ready and go out and fight against Amalek. Now, 
I want to encourage you as your pastor there tonight, amen, to get ready. There's some things you need to do, amen. You can read uh, in, the, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul gives us a great list of armament that we can put on, I believe, as soldiers for God. He's, been, he's equipped us. He's given us all that we need, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, amen. All of these things we've been given to help us in the battle. You say, preacher, can I win this battle? Let me say quite clearly, you can't win it. You've never been able to win it. You can account for many a time that you've lost it and you know it. Uh, You can share the testimonies of your broken heart of the times that you went your own way and you failed to win the battle against the flesh. It prevailed against you. But may I say to you, it's never been ours to win, but the man on the inside has got got to be involved. You can't win against the flesh if you're battling it on your own. <laughs> I've lost a many of them. Try, I can do this. You can't do this. It ain't within, you can't bring the man of the flesh under subjection. The Bible said that it is enmity against God. It is not subject unto the laws of God, neither indeed can be. You say, well, why can't I force my flesh to apply or or live by the laws of God? May I say to you, Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit, his Spirit, they're two different things. You can't make the laws of God apply to the fleshly man. They won't work. And the flesh cries out against those things that are of God every day. How many of us struggle to find time to pray? Find time to read our Bibles. Find time to witness to the lost man. Find time to do those things that are of eternal benefit and we end up not doing anything that's worthwhile and wasting time on all the things the flesh demands of us and we follow it around as if it's some kind of dictator or ruler. May I say to you today, the war cannot be fought on the same ground. You say, preacher, what are you going to, what are you talking? I'm talking about you better get up on the hill and start fighting the real battle rather the battle is to be won in prayer you can't do it on your own we got to have help but oh I've got a helper (laughs) amen I've got a helper I've got one that intercedes for me up on the hill I've got one amen that raises his hands up amen and allows me to win the battle every time (laughs) You say, preacher, can you be defeated when God, not when God's in the mix? I can't. Hey, man, there ain't ever been a battle against the flesh that I hadn't won. Hey, man, when I turned my heart to God and I said, I need your help here, I want you to know that he can lift his hands up and the enemy cannot prevail against me. I've got one that can help me win if I'll but go to him. You see, what God was teaching the children of Israel was is that as prepared as they were, they could not win by themselves. They'd fight with all they had, but you know what? They were going to lose. You say, how do you know? Because every time Moses' hands went down, guess who was winning? The flesh. Amalek was prevailing the very instant that Moses' hands went down. But the very instant they went back up, guess who prevailed? Joshua began to prevail. I want you to know I don't want to lose this war. I don't want to lose that battle. And I have to fight it day after day. This is not an event that I can plan for. So, well, sometime in September, I'm going to to have to fight a real battle with the flesh. No, it'll be in the morning or before I get home tonight. You'll have to battle a fleshly type of struggle. It'll occur in you. And, brother, there better be somebody on the hill in your behalf. Somebody that's helping you win this battle. And I realize that there are things you know right now that you can't do. But there are those things that we think we can do. And that's often where we get in trouble. Right? You'll slip into a circumstance and you'll say, I've got this. 
I know just what to do. I can control the flesh. I can control my own appetites. I can control the lust. I can control the temper. I can control the anger. I can control the bitterness. I can control the jealousy or I can control. May I say to you today, you ain't never been able to control anything that appears, that comes from the flesh. Brother, the laws of God are not subject to the fleshly body. It's not subject to these things, neither indeed can be. You can't make the flesh be holy. No, the best you can do is fight the battle day after day and win day after day. You say, preacher, how in the world am I going to win? There better be somebody interceding for you on the hill. Amen. I want you to know that the the victory with Amalek occurred because of what took place on the hill. Amen. Every time Moses' hands went up, the children of God prevailed. And ultimately, when Aaron and Hur got beside him and they each held his hands up in the air, I, I picture it as him holding his elbows with one hand and with their other hand holding his hand. Right, just keeping them up in the air because they could see down below that the victory was being obtained as long as Moses' hands were up in the air. Listen, I believe God's trying to teach us something too. Our battle is fought on the hill. We have got to have the help and got to have the one that is uh, knows what to do. And brother, that was what Moses was doing. He was the type of Christ for you and I today. Let me say this, that ultimately my victory was bought and won on a hill one day. When Jesus died on Calvary for me, the victory over the flesh took place. But until I get redeemed, until I leave this fleshly body, there'll be a war to fight. I want to read also now, if you want to turn with us to Romans chapter number 7. Let me read to you what the Bible said Romans chapter number 7, verse number 18. I want to read this. It's several verses, but it's important as we begin to recognize the battle against the flesh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Now, what did he say? Dwelleth no good thing. Wait, not even one. No, he said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. (laughs) I tell you right now, people that brag about who they are and what they can do. I'm telling you, there's no more foolish, there's no, no more foolish talk that could be made than to brag on one's own flesh. It's like my hunting dogs. The minute I brag on them, they'll run trash. That's just what they do to me every time. So I just quit bragging on them. Amen. They ain't, I want you to know today that when I look in the mirror, I found the problem. Hey man, it ain't somebody, it ain't my mom, it ain't my daddy, it ain't my neighbor. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm the one that has the problem. And if I'll be honest about it, the only one that can help me win that battle is on the hill with his hands up for me. And he's right there to help us win that battle. Here's what Paul said. I believe this is needful. Stick with me here. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for the will is present with me (laughs) amen that's the inward man that's the inward man you see wanting to do the things of God for the will is present with me but how to perform it that which is good I find not for the good that I would I, I do not but the evil which I would not that I do now if I do that I would not it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You say, what is the evil preacher? It's the flesh you dwell in. You'll never refine it. You'll never perfect it. You'll never make it holy or sanctified. Brother, by the day they lay your carcass in a box and put it in the ground, you'll thank God that I am finally done with that. I am finally past that. I want you to know there ain't but one remedy for the flesh, and that is it has to die. And bless God, I'm looking for the day when I don't have a flesh to worry about no more. You want to talk about being rid of sin? Brother, you got to be rid of the flesh to be rid of sin but one day we're going to be rid of the flesh you say my goodness you're 
Awful morbid tonight. Let me tell you something. For the Bible said in verse number 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You don't think Paul understood what was going on? Amen. Just like the children of Israel when they were fighting against Amalek, they every one of them knew we can't win this ourselves. If Moses' arms ain't up, we're going down. We can't win this one. You say, preacher, you talk as if we're helpless. I'm telling you right now, when it comes to winning a battle against sin, there is nothing within yourself that will ensure a victory unless you have a direct line to the one on the hill that is interceding for you. But I want you to know the Holy Spirit has made a promise to me that he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. He'll fight my battles. He'll give me just what I need. Brother, if I look unto heaven from which comes my help, Brother, we'll see the victory over the flesh. I don't care if you're 100 years old, you're still fighting the flesh. And I ain't talking about just the pains that come from being old. Seems every year I get to, I'll just add another one. Something else starts hurting. Oh, wretched man that I am. But that ain't what Paul was talking about. He wasn't talking about arthritis. He wasn't talking about physical pain. No. What he was talking about was the struggles that he had daily with the flesh man. The battle that occurred daily. And when he was honest enough, amen, doesn't it? it does my heart good to read Romans 7, by the way. Amen. I don't feel so alienated. Paul said, the things I would do, I don't do them. The things I shouldn't do, I end up doing them. And then he ultimately said, oh, wretched man that I am, who in the world can save me from the body of this, this flesh, this very thing that hinders me the most? And he said, I thank God. Amen. May I say to you today, my Moses on the hill, he's better than Moses. I want you to know today he don't need two buddies holding his arms up. He stands with all power and he looks down on me. His eye is never not on me. I want you to know when I call on him, he can rescue me. He never fails. I thank God, Paul said. He said, the only hope I've got is in Jesus. He said, I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. You know what he's saying? He said he was saying that there is clearly something different between the spirit man and the flesh. I can't make the flesh man spirit, and I can't make the spirit man flesh. But all we find here in the book of in the book of Exodus, what God was trying to teach the children of God was if, if they'll just depend on him, he can win the battle for them. You say, preacher, I've got a battle that I don't know how I can win it. I want you to know I know one that can. I know one that knows just exactly what you need. He knows how to do it, brother, and he is right there. He is able to help you in your time of need. The battle is against the flesh, you see. But the battle is only won from the hill. And when we call upon the one who has the power to deliver us, we'll experience the power of that deliverance in mighty ways. Look with us. The Bible said in Galatians chapter number five, verse number 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. That word lusteth means simply conflicts or wars against. The flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things you would. Does that startle anybody? He is absolute, the flesh is absolutely intent on doing the opposite of what serves and pleases God. And you have to live with him 24-7 He's ever present in your life. He never takes a vacation. And he will never <laughs> want to go to church. He'll never want to sing a song. He'll never want to testify. 
Anytime somebody testifies, brother, if it's of the flesh, it's because they were prideful. It's because they wanted recognition. It's because they needed somebody to pat them on the back. Those things happen. They do occur. But that's the flesh still working to his own benefit and the opposite of serving God in humility and servitude. I'm telling you today, we have an enemy today that is ever present. The devil's a created being. He ain't got no way to get to me unless God gets him in. But bless God, I sleep with that other one. I work with him. I fish with him. I hunt with him. I eat with him. There ain't ever a time, Paul, that my flesh ain't right there. And I'll tell you right now, it's capable of anything. I despise it, really. The Bible said that God looked in the sixth chapter of Genesis and he saw that the heart of man was continuously evil. You know what that was? That was the flesh. That was a manifestation of the second man, Adam. That was the fallen nature of man, corrupt as it could be. You say, well, we're refined today. We're better. No, we ain't any better than they were then. We're just as corrupt, just as immoral, just as ungodly, just as wicked. And you're seeing it found itself every day in our own culture. But there's one that's greater than the flesh. Oh, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Bible said there that the the flesh, it wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And this battle, this battle continually, it goes on and on. and, And yet we find that the truth of it, the truth of it is, is that when we'll walk in the spirit and that we'll deprive our own flesh, that we'll see the battles won You say, preacher, just how in the world do I actually walk in the spirit and deprive my flesh? (laughs) Paul would go as far to say as I'm going to crucify my flesh every day. Paul would go as far to recognize that what he had to do in this warfare was to kill that thing spiritually. He was to win that battle spiritually over the flesh that rendered it unconscious and unable to cause the deviations in his life that were ungodly and wicked. And the apostle was willing to admit his absolute dependence on the spirit of God in that. He said, listen, he said, if I will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, he said, we'll fulfill the will of God. But you got to walk in the spirit. You see, the battle was fought on the hill and the battle was won on the hill. And if you don't have Christ in your life today, here's what I can predict. The same as the apostle Peter in the book of Peter, he wrote that the, this is a true proverb, that the hog once washed would return to the wallowing in its mire. You know what I can say for people that claim to be saved that never got saved? Time will tell. You know why? Because their flesh will drag them right back out into that mess that they were in because you can't win this battle on your own. You can't do it. You don't have the power. You've never had the power. By the way, God never gave you the power. The same as the children of Israel, he expected them to trust him for the victory. He expected them to look to him for the victory. Yes, we have a part to play. Yes, we have armament to put on. Yes, we can prepare for the battle. We can do as Joshua and we can stand up and be bold and be ready for the the battle that is at hand. But we must never forget that our help comes from the hills. The only one that can deliver us is the one interceding for us. The battle is fought on the hill. Let me close with this. Let me close with this. And these are the words of the Lord. Let me go back to Exodus chapter number 17. Here's what the Bible said. We read the last few verses. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Now again, what did Amalek represent? The flesh. And what did God say here? There's three things I want us to get from what he said here in the last part. Number one, the Lord said, I will utterly get rid of the flesh. (laughs) You say, preacher, how are you going to do that? 
He's going to separate you from it one day. And he's taking you to a better place. <laughs> they think we're crazy, don't they? I've been dragging this carcass around for 54 years now. And it ain't ever done anything but give me a fit. Now, I want to live just as long as the other man does. God knows the truth. But there is also a longing when I'll be done with him. You see, my day of sin ends when this old flesh lays down. God said, I will utterly, I will utterly put away the remembrance of Amalek. Bless his holy name. <laughs> when I get to heaven, I won't have no more flesh to deal with. He will have utterly put away the remembrance of my flesh. No more sin. It'll be gone. <laughs> don't tell me people don't go through the doors of shouting. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because for the first time in their life, they free of this ball and chain of sin and corruption. Oh, bless God, I hate it sometimes. I don't it make you mad. It, I despise the flesh sometimes. Hey Amen. He's, he's devious and corrupt and every time trying to trick and, and devise a cunning way of, stip, of causing you to stumble and fall. May I say today, there's coming a day the Lord said that I will utterly destroy the remembrance of the flesh. Because when I go to heaven, friend, he ain't going. He ain't going. The Bible tells us concerning the flesh. You can read in the book of Thessalonians and Corinthians. And, and somewhat is said about what will take place during the rapture for those that are alive. But let me just speak a word to about what happens to the flesh ultimately? Because I want you to be clear. There is no part of the first man, Adam, that goes to heaven. Just want to make sure we're clear about that. The gospel record is clear that, that those that have died, right, your, your old body, that thing that, that has been a problem to you since the day you was born, Right? Ain't that what he said? Man's born of a woman a few days and full of trouble. They're going to lay it in the ground one day. God don't come back first. They're going to lay it in the ground. Now, let me be clear. You said, preacher, I thought that come out of the ground and it went back to God. It gets changed. It gets changed. May I say to you today, the only way that the flesh man could ever get into the presence of a holy God is it's got to be holy itself. <laughs> what the Bible says, I get a new one. <laughs> I get a new body. It's going to get changed. Amen. Whatever's rotten out there in that old Christ casket, amen, it don't matter if it's ashes in an urn. I want you to know he's going to change that and he's going to create what he calls a glorified body. Amen. That'll have nothing to do with this first man. Amen. There ain't nothing glorified about it. I'm going to get a new body and it won't be flesh. Amen. That new, that new man won't be enmity against God. No, that new man will be just like him. It's going to be glorified, eternal, incorruptible. <laughs> Get a new body. New body. Bless the Lord. I hope I can watch somehow from it when they bury mine. I'm going to say, you finally got it. A new body. Number one, the Bible said, the Lord said that I will utterly destroy the remembrance of the flesh. But number two, let me read it in the last verse here. For he said, now Moses built an altar and he called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. For he said, look at what he said. He said, because the Lord hath sworn. 
that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. What, what has the Lord sworn? Well, number one, that he ultimately will destroy the very remembrance of the flesh. But number two, he will continue to fight against the flesh. He will not compromise with the flesh. He will not acquiesce to the flesh. He will not conform to the flesh. He will continuously fight the flesh from generation to generation. Your God will always fight for you. I wrote 2,000 years ago. <laughs> well, more than that. It was root 3,500 years ago, and here what, we, what the Lord saying was is I despise that flesh too. And I am going to fight against the flesh from generation to generation to generation all the way to 2022. The Lord made a promise. He had sworn. Jehovah Nisi, our banner, has sworn that he will never compromise with the flesh. That means, hear me, he's always on the hill. He's always on the hill helping us win the battle. He'll never compromise with the flesh. Utterly destroy the flesh one day. He's going to get rid of the very remembrance of it. But also, he will always help us fight this battle. He will not fail. He will always help us fight this battle. Last, as we close, the Bible said in this very truth that we've read for you that this means the conflict will occur as long as we're in the flesh. All right, those are distinctly different. So look, number one, he's going to utterly destroy, destroy the remembrance of it, right? He's going to get rid of death one day for you. I mean, the flesh through death. We're going to be separated from it and we'll never be bound by flesh no more. But number two, he'll never compromise with the flesh, which means he will always fight that battle for me if I'll ask him, if I'll look to him. But you know what it also infers? It infers that you will never not have a battle to fight if you're alive. As long as you're alive, there will always be an Amalek coming to you. Israel didn't pick that fight. Amalek did. Your flesh will not stop. It won't give up. Even in your final hours, your flesh will not acquiesce to the things of God. The only hope we have is the Lord our banner to whom Moses erected an altar and praised. When he seen the hand of God from the simple act of obedience of lifting his hands up, he saw God prevail against the flesh, against the enemy. And God will win every battle for you today. There's not anything that he can't deliver you from. Amen. I, I, can't, I can't say the devil made me do it. I can't say it was a moment of weakness. Listen, you full of those moments. Right? You ain't never been nothing but a moment of weakness. You, you just a mess waiting to happen. You need somebody on the hill that's helping you win this battle. Oh, that's encouraging to me that one day he's going to put that down, going to separate me from it. One day, hey amen, I won't have any more flesh to deal with. That means no more sin. That's what Paul said in Romans 7. He said, it's sin in me. It's sin in me. It's what you see that's my problem. Well, I believe God expects us to prepare for the battle. But as we look to him and walk in the spirit, what he said was, is if you'll walk in the spirit, Larry, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But you've got to walk in the spirit. Now you say, what is that? Well, that's looking to the hill. That's, it. that's asking God to come and, and by his Holy Spirit to, to help us to win those battles, those temptations, those struggles, those trials, those decisions, those simple things in life that you simply need to do and you know you need to do it. 
You know by the inward man that, that there's a direction and you need to walk it. And yet your flesh is saying, no, go this way. No, do that. Go. Everything that is opposite of God, that's what the flesh wants to do. And yet God's going to ultimately put it down one day and he will never compromise with it. The Holy Spirit that lives in me never compromises with sin. Never. And ultimately, I'll face this battle till the day that I die. The battle with the flesh, the battle with Amalek. Come get a song. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You can sum it up with that. We are our own worst enemy. The flesh is the enemy, and we live in the flesh. The Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, for we know that if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about this house. The spirit man dwells in this old house right now. And every year that goes past and every decade that goes by, this old house wears down. But he said, we know that if this old tabernacle were to be dissolved, he said, we've got a new one in the heavens. See, I've got something far better awaiting. Where no flesh shall ever be, won't be any hindrance that comes from just being alive. Right? You don't even have trial, any. Our flesh is corrupt, and we don't even have to try. You better have something on the inside that is greater than the flesh, or I can predict your future. I'm not a prophet. It's just simple to predict. Your flesh will go the way of all flesh before it, down in the corruption and the sin and the pits of this wicked world. It knows nothing else. And it cannot be, it cannot be transformed into something that is righteous or holy, it is what we're dwelling in and will forever be that very thing that hinders us the most. But oh, I'm glad that I've got one that fights my battles. Right? None of that was an excuse for you to sin, by the way. <laughs> right? None of that was, was a license for you to go out and do what you want and blame it on the flesh. No, as long as Jesus lives you, you got no excuse. You could win every single battle. Because the one you need, is a, he's right there. He's right there. Stand with us. If you're here tonight and need the Lord, the altar's open. He loves you tonight, and I believe that every heart that desires to be near him, he'll be near too. If you need him, come on. Mm-hmm.